All right, so thank you very much. Um, that was the video that we, in conjunction with Culture Shock Canada, filmed and produced for Marc Andre and Culture Shock Canada, and it's about dance education and what that organization does for the community. Um, so this was our project, and for us, it was a lot of community involvement, um, a very big communication aspect, as well as a huge multimedia component. Um, so today, uh, in this presentation, we would like to go over what we wanted to do through this presentation, what we ended up doing, and why it worked, as well as honing in on the importance of communication throughout this semester-long project. Um, after that, we will then wrap up and uh, finish up with a few questions from the audience. All right, I will now pass it off to Megan to explain what we wanted to do. So this project for us started out as a class project, and we were lucky to work with Marc Andre and his organization. Uh, it was a really interesting project for us uh, because, you know, we had to create a project for someone else. And, I mean, really, we had to take something that we didn't really know much about. We didn't know about Culture Shock. We didn't know what they did or how they did it. And we had to create something that really represented them and their messages. So we really had to communicate throughout the entire process just to kind of figure out what they wanted us to do and just so we could do it as well as we could. Yeah, as we said, we got to work with Culture Shock Canada, and you know we learned a lot, and they're a really great organization. As I said, we had to communicate a lot. We got to do it through a variety of different ways. We met up in person. We emailed quite a lot. Uh, we had a few Skype messages so that we could show them things and get actually like immediate feedback on videos and audio and what they thought. And we just shared our progress throughout the entire time through using Google Drive. Next, so next we're gonna we're gonna go through over exactly how we worked on this project and the process we went through. So, Brittany, so uh, this project was part of a, a class project. So we had some guidelines from Lisa, who was our teacher, to let us know that we wanted she wanted us to be at a certain place at a certain time throughout the semester. So this timeline just kind of over overlooks that that's a milestone timeline. But on top of that, we've also made sure we communicated a lot with with Mark Andre, other Culture Shock members. Uh, some of the dance crews that we went to go film, and just everyone who was part of Culture Shock to make sure everyone liked where we were going in the direction that we we chose. Um, so with working with Culture Shock, it wasn't a usual uh, student student client project because we weren't just working with Mark Andre. We were working with all of Culture Shock. So we were we're talking with the dance teachers, the students, um, the people that went to drop in classes. Etc. So we wanted to make sure that everyone liked the direction that we were going. It wasn't just us, or it wasn't just for Marc Andre. So we made sure we we met as a group, the, the four of us, every week to make sure we were on track. Uh, we made sure we knew what we were doing. Uh, we we also met with multiple Culture Shock members every every so often, uh, just to get their feedback and to get some more information and and footage for our project. Um, and also a big part of this project was to understand exactly the messages that Culture Shock Canada wanted to present. Um, so we figured out that like, you know, it was just a, as many locations, it was very warm and welcoming and we wanted to be able to give that message through the video itself. Um, so I know that Marc Andre helped us out there as well as a lot of the instructors and the students would, you know, talk to us about that and that was really helpful. All right, so now Eleanor will talk about uh, why this particular project worked out how it did. Okay, so I just want to start by sharing our personal story here. So uh, before joining Carlton, I was uh, like a student from a different university. So when I transferred here, uh, I was hoping to transfer some of my credits. So I have technically taken a technical course. And then, so when I um, trying to get my degree here, I was blocked because I didn't have a credit that Lisa was saying, well, the technical course you're taking was not, um, Really, it's different from the one that I offer here at Carlton. So I just want to say how it works is all about the communication. So this course that we took with Lisa was about communication course. And it wasn't really until I took this course, so all the communications, not just emails, that we also Skype with Mark Andre, and then the four of us, we're in different programs. So we also met in person, usually at Tim Hortons. And then early in the morning getting coffees and then getting ready before for our presentations. So how it really works is everybody is engaged and everybody is willing to spend the time and then want to make things work. 
So we also got feedback. So one of the important thing is working with our client here, Mark Andre. Uh, he was not the only one from the organizations that we talked to. So there were also the dance teachers and the other uh, organization uh, people, and then also the students, the teachers that teaches the dance. We all actually get in touch with them and then have also the feedback from them throughout the process of making this video. And so as you can see, the importance of communications. And so what I really learned a lot about this course and not regretting taking it, even though I already done some kind of similar courses. So it's not just about writing. So we also have, have to document that each meetings, we had to have a meeting write up and then not just in person, Skypes, and then also even the telephones meeting all had to be recorded. And so that is just at the end of the course, it ended out to be about 30 pages of this record of documentation. So it's all about communications. And then so if one aspect of the video, say the, the sound, the mu music background is not working, then we had to get back to Mark Andre, and then he will give a feedback and say, okay, maybe we'll go with this song because of these reasons. So it's all back and forth. And we share ideas, and we, we had to keep each member on the track, including the professor. So like every single communication emails are we CCR professors. And then part of this project that was unique for us and we got really lucky with was that uh, Mark Andre wasn't just a client, but he was also an educator, which I would like for him to talk a bit more about right now. One of the things that we wanted to talk about and, and we got lucky and I, I guess they got lucky in that sense is that I'm also an educator. And in this process, I understand the fact that a lot of students need to, to work with a professional and that client is giving them orders. This is what we want, this is what we need and, and we'll give them feedback and that feedback isn't always what the students want to hear. And I made it clear from the beginning, I said, I will give you as much feedback as possible but everything is going to be constructive. Um, and in that sense, I think that a lot of clients don't have that, that approach. This is what they want and this is what they need and I know, I know some horror stories in the past because I've worked with, uh, with Carlton a few years, uh, I think three years in a row, um, where we were hearing horror stories about how clients were treating the students. A and so for me, it was very, very important to let them understand that I was there to help them grow. And at the end of the day, they may have a project that I'm not happy with, and I'm okay with that. But they needed to be okay with that as well. Um, because it's true, like, I mean, we've done web design, we've done all that kind of stuff with Carlton, and there were some projects that we took, some projects that we didn't, because at the end of the day, it has to fit what we need. And they're on a timeline, right? So it doesn't mean that, um, you know, that they're going to meet all those deadlines. It doesn't mean that they're going to be able to get um, the whole concept of what we need in that time frame. And I wanted them to be comfortable with that. So I think based on that, uh, based on that, they kind of lucked out, and I'm not, you know, I'm not patting myself on the back in any way, shape, or form, but it was a bonus because I could tell them anything, literally, and they didn't take it personally. They just worked on it, right? So they worked on what they needed to work on, and we did get something that we're going to use. I mean, we have been using it um, on an international scale. So, um, so yeah, so we wanted to kind of point that out to say that you're not... <laughs> You know, if you are students here that are going to be working with community partners, it won't be that easy all the time. And you will get frustrated. And, uh, but that's, that's business, right? So I'm also an entrepreneur. And I understand that, you know, you might get yelled at. You might, uh, you might hear some things that don't make you as a person feel good. Because it's your work. It's your artistic work. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, okay, thank you, Mark andre um, So yeah, from our perspective, it was a bit of a community culture shock for us. You know, we were expecting that you were gonna go and we're gonna work with a client and that's gonna be that. We're gonna continue our creative process as we do. But it was more than that. It was a whole organization. There were so many expectations that we had to meet, but at the same time, we did kind of have to just stay on our creative process and work with that. So it was good to get the feedback and 
it was good that Mark Andre understood that this is what you know we had a timeline that we needed to follow, and in the end, it worked out for us, and it will work out for other people too. Um, but it is a community culture shock when you move from the student experience of working on projects to actually having to produce content for a client. So to wrap this up, just with a few key points, um, be open to new experiences. As a student, uh, not everything is going to be as simple as it is, you know, if you work on your project, you hand it in, you're done. Uh, be open to feedback. You're going to be getting it from many different people, people you didn't even expect kind of thing. Um, and also be open to asking for help, like we asked for help, and we're glad that we did. The one thing I want to focus on is this communication process. Communicate often, okay? A lot of people just stay away from that communication. They're afraid to ask questions. They're afraid to, you know, keep the back and forth. We have did some back and forth almost on a daily. So if you want to succeed in your project, okay, communicate often. So if you're a community partner who is going to partner with Carleton University, make sure that that communication is as often as possible. That will help you in the success of your projects. Yeah, and just to quickly add to that, um, I think Marc-Andre, you made it over to Carleton to their class th three or four times throughout the semester. So that was a crucial uh, um, key to success in that puzzle, well, having, having that client actually in the classroom and seeing uh, the progress of their work and being able to give them feedback. So uh, it's a big time commitment on the part of, of the community partner, for sure. And th what made this project work as well was that these, these girls really did want to work hard. So it does take a lot of extra time. I think it takes a lot more time than a regular course um, when you're actually involved with a client, but hopefully you feel it was worth it. Mm -hmm.